we would like to thank all of our patrons for your continued support. Pretty nice, eh? Hello, friends. So, it's Monday, July 8th. Um, we got back from our island trip to White's Cove and Cabrillo Beach last night at about 9 p.m. If you watched the previous couple of episodes, you saw all the problems we were having with the bilge. The bilge pump. Everything associated with the bilge pump. Um, which uh, was kind of a... It's nerve-wracking because I don't have a drip list packing shaft. I have like a regular packing shaft that lets a lot of water in because it, it needs to be replaced. Um, so luckily I have a very deep bilge. My bilge is like 24 inches deep. So I can I can barely reach the bottom of it with my aunt, hand to get stuff nearby. I can't reach the far back. But um, so what seems to have happened first was the float switch got stuck up in the up position, running the pump, which then blew the glass fuse on my bilge pump switch on the on my nav station, um, and because I woke up one morning and checked the bilge, and there was quite a bit of water, and then I looked, and there was no power to the switch panel. So I checked the fuse; the fuse was blown. It's a glass fuse. Um, I think I have it here. Um, all the other fuses on my boat are blade fuses, which are more contemporary. This was a glass fuse that was blown in this little cap. And we'll look at how all that goes together in a second. So I went through all of my spares and there were no glass fuses because the only thing on my boat that takes a glass fuse is this one switch panel. So um, I'll show you guys how I worked around that in a second. So. It's a series of events. The switch, the float switch kept getting stuck in the up position, which burned that out. I bypassed the fuse so that it would still, the uh, bilge pump would work. And then while I was messing with the um, packing nut, trying to get it to slow down, I pulled the hose and it broke the bilge pump off of its base. Well, it broke one little snap. There's like snaps on either side. So you can unsnap it, screw the base down, and then you snap it over. And the, the base has like filter rings or, you know, slots. So it broke one of the little plastic things off um, and sucked that up into the bilge pump. So the bilge pump stopped working entirely. So then I was like, I have no build. My bilge pump doesn't work. Um, I've bypassed the fuse, which is, you know, a fire risk. And, uh, and we're under anchor on Catalina Island, in the middle of Catalina Island. We're, in, we're even near Avalon or Two Harbors. So I got out my emergency bilge pump, which I had never used, but it was brand new. And it was cool. It's like a long hose. I'll actually show you guys when I pump it out right now. Put it in. You hand pump it. I pumped it into the sink. Um, pumps out real quick. So did that. Um, I... I Worked on the other bilge pump, got the stuff out of it, and got it to work. It, it worked until yesterday coming home where it stopped working entirely. So, here we are, Monday morning. Luckily, me and Camille are both freelance in our day jobs, so neither one of us got booked for today, which was lucky because then we just stayed in the boat last night so we could stay here and I could go get, you know, like this morning I got up, hand pumped out the bilge, and then we went just now to West Marine to buy a new bilge pump and a new switch. I bought what is, you know, one of the one of the better brands, maybe one of the best brands you can get. Um, Rule, trusted brand from everything I can tell. I got the same capacity size, 1100 gallons per hour. And uh, it's a very similar size and shape to the one I have now, so I know it'll fit in that spot. And um, I also bought the same, you know, Rule Super Switch which is the floaty kind of switch similar to what I have down there. Um, and basically, if you don't know how bilge pump works, the bilge pump just sits down there in the water. It's got strainer holes, you know, we'll look at everything in more detail. 
and it just sits on the bottom. It's screwed to the bottom. And then the float switch, when the water gets to a certain level, it's kind of like your toilet. It floats up, and that sends power to the pump, and then the pump drains your bilge dry. Not dry. Mine's, mine has nuisance water, so it's never dry. But it drains out what's necessary for this float switch to drop back down. So today we'll be replacing the float switch and the bilge pump. Um, I have two float switches in the bilge. I have one that's further back, that's higher up, that sets off an alarm. And it's kind of cool because even if my switch panel switch is turned in the off position, it still sends power and turns on the pump. So if somebody had switched it off and you're not at the boat, when the water gets to a certain level, that high water goes off and it, it turns it on no matter what. So that's a great safety measure. And I think that 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 one up there, it's I've, I've heard it go off maybe three times. And a lot of times it's like when I'm sailing in pretty rough seas, like the water will slosh back there and set it off. So it doesn't get a lot of use. So that one might last a lot longer. So let's go ahead and uh, pop these open. And then we'll look at the switch panel and then we'll look down on the bilge and see what we're getting into and get these things installed. If you saw like the lapse episode or one of the episodes um, of the um, Cabrillo Beach trip, I, I talked through what I'm about to talk through on that. But for anyone that's just into the how to videos and not sailing videos, I'm going to go ahead and explain what happened in the sort of order that they happened um so if you saw those this is redundant but um basically i'll show you uh what my switch panel looks like and um we'll go from there okay so this is my bilge pump switch and alarm here's the little alarm here's our fuse that i was talking about um since the fuse blew there's no power normally there's power light is lit up so, since it blew, no power. As I mentioned, um, I didn't have any replacement fuses, which is a lesson in spares. So there's the blown fuse. I was raised in New Mexico by a lot of rednecks. So, I learned from old cars and and all kinds of stuff that you can wrap a fuse in foil to bypass it but this hole was too small so it was just tearing the foil off so i just made a fuse out of foil and pushed it in and you see we got power and so you can hear it running i know it's not doing anything because it's not it doesn't come out the back of the boat so but so that's how I got myself temporary power to, to survive our trip and not have to hand pump the thing every so many hours. So I went to West Marine and bought these fuses. So I got new fuses. And uh, so now we have a proper fuse and we have a spare. What I think I'm actually going to do right now, I'm going to leave it like this, but next time i'm at the boat doing projects i think i'm actually going to rewire this switch so that i'm going to get rid of that fuse and have a blade fuse so that all my fuses on the boat are the same type um blade fuses are more contemporary and um you can also bypass blade fuses just by sticking a wire on either side so it's still something that I can do like a cheat workaround in an emergency situation, but it'd be, it makes more sense since it's the only glass fuse on the boat to just rewire this switch panel so that it takes blade fuses. And it, it'll be aft, it'll be inside the panel to switch, switch the fuse instead of this easy front mm -hmm. access, but that's, doesn't matter, it's no big deal. So that's the future of that. So now it's time to I'm actually going to disconnect the power to the bilge pump so that we can get down and start taking out the old um, float switch and fuse pump and uh, get them up here where we can work on them 
and get the new ones wired in and then we'll install the new ones down in the build. It's, it's really tight in there. Um, I think I can get the camera positioned so you guys can see what's happening. And um, it's uh, very difficult to clean this bilge because it's very deep, but I might hose it out um, before we get to all that stuff. So now it's time to disconnect the power and uh, oh, and I'll show you guys how, how my hand pump works. It's just like a hand, hand pump, emergency bilge pump I bought from West Marine for like $60 or something. I bought it for one a trip because I have a well gusher that came with the boat, but I need a rebuild kit for it, like an old one, um, that's going to be mounted in the lazarette. But um, I just bought it out of, you know, some would say smarts, I would say paranoia. Um, and thankfully I had it, you know, on the boat because that kept us from, otherwise I'd have been like hand scooping it out with like a cup, which would have sucked. So, um, yeah, let's, let's go. I'm going to go ahead and unhook the power and then we'll move on. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how this emergency hand pump works and then we'll go from there. So this one's just like from West Marine. It was like $59. Basically this is the end that takes on the water. Right there. And then this is your hose where the water comes out. You put it down in there. You could, you could put it out in your cockpit. Um, I just do it in the sink so I can just, it's easy and I can keep an eye on it. And I just put my foot on it and you just, do, it's a really long pump, which is cool. And it just starts pumping it out. It pumps out a lot faster than the actual electric pump does so if you're in an emergency you can make some headway on it you know or you could have your electric pump running and you could do assist with this if it was like you had a bad you had a lot of water coming in through a through hole or something that's how this pump works and i just set both ends out in the cockpit so that if there's any left in there it wants to drain out it doesn't do it in the boat now it's time to start unhooking everything I already clipped like I had all these in a zip tied together so they're nice and tidy before the chaos erupted. So they're all, the cables are already, I mean the wires are already loose. Let's go ahead and pull this off. I use really short screws just out of fear because you're drilling a hole, you know, you're screwing something to your hole. But with a cord boat, you're going to quickly drill into that core. And the manual for the new one says, you know, when you, pre, you, pre, you drill that hole, you take the screw back out and you use like ABYC approved sealant so there's no water intrusion on the hole into, the, into your core. I don't have to worry about that because that's solid fiberglass. Okay, so <clears throat> got the bilge all cleaned out, dried out. I packed paper towels up around the upper part, around the um, alarm switch, so that the water that slowly comes in from the packing nut won't find its way to our work spot. So let's look at it. So that's as clean as it's going to get. Um, we're gonna go ahead and dry fit these two and kind of see where we want them. And then I'm gonna get the bases screwed down before any water makes its way down in there. And then we'll get to wiring them up into the system. These are about the same size. The one I had was like a generic version of this. So that'll probably go there. And then my super switch will go like here 
and, uh, and this forward wire will be secured so it doesn't interfere with the um, float switch. See if I can move this for you guys so you can see it. So that's kind of where we're going to have things. I might scoot the super switch back just a hair so tucked in once I undo those wires. Tucked in a little tighter to the pump but then also I don't want to interfere with the intrusion of water into the pump so I might keep it right there. Um, this pump has like it won't burn out if it runs dry so that's good. So I think that's where we're going to go. This works is here's our pump. You got these things here and then you screw them down into these like that. Once that's screwed down you reach down with your wired up pump and you snap it into place like that. Now on this one these are the things that broke off that sucked up into the old bilge pump and stopped it from working the first time. <clears throat> So, this is just like a generic version of this. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and screw down this base first. And then we have a similar thing. You just push on the sides here. This is our super switch, our float switch. It releases the switch itself. And then you screw these down into place. And then you can just snap that guy back in after you get it wired up. Okay, so here's our old pump. Got a brown wire and a black wire. The brown wire is your hot, the black is your ground or your negative. On these float switches, they have two brown wires. So they're basically like ambidextrous, they don't matter. Like, basically, what happens is you have your hot coming in on your brown wire to the switch, and then it goes out to this pump. So that's how this this setup works and um, so when this is raised up it activates the power allowing the pump to start so it doesn't matter which of the brown wires goes to the battery and which goes to the pump as long as one goes to there and one goes to the power the highway travels either way so I know that these wires are all chill so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my pump first and again, I have the power off to the whole system. I'm gonna cut my pump first. Here's my new, my new um, rule pump, and it has the same colored wires. Now, not all wires might be colored the same. They should be, but not, not necessarily. So, um, and this is all for a 12 volt system here in America. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, trim these real high, and we're gonna use what I use on everything, these heat shrink tubes. We're gonna crimp them, heat shrink them, and then we're gonna wrap them with waterproof tape. Even though they're real high, I wanna make sure there's no chance of any shorting or anything like that. So let's do the pump first. It reaches, but not with a lot of play, that's for sure. On our new switch they're gray but it doesn't matter it's um, more of the same this doesn't matter which of these it goes to they just have to one goes they both they do the same thing in the in in either direction so I'm gonna go ahead and get these clamped up and then we'll start installing all right I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all this paper towel dam now. It's not a big deal if a little water gets in at this point. <clears throat> and I got some back here in the secret hole. That's where a lot of water is. Okay. So, let's get this down in here. Okay, 
she snapped into place. Happy as can be. Oh, see, now I may have to adjust my float switch because it looks like the switch is going to hit that hose. Where it should work now. Let's go ahead and get our float switch clipped in and then we can get the wires taken care of and then we can test out the system so there's that these wires will come over here zip tie to these and everything will come up together in a nice orderly bunch but first yeah i'm gonna go ahead and zip tie them all up i don't know Let's get power to it and see if the pump works. Okay. Now there's power to the system. Let's see if the pump makes sound on manual. There you go. And then let's, I set it on auto. We'll reach down here and pull up our switch. Okay, that works. And then this is our emergency switch, which sets off our alarm. And it also turns on the pump. Okay, so I got all the wires bound up in a wire housing. Everything sealed up with waterproof tape. And I got one of the zip ties screwed to the wall. But we need to fill this thing with water and see if it works and uh, show you guys racing the daylight. And so maybe my switch is a little high. Did you see how much nuisance water is down there? But that's about how much was always in my system. Let's go outside now and look at it coming out of the boat. It pumps it out so quick that I can't even get out here in time to see it come out. But I got the hose running. There we go. And it pumps it out so much faster than the old one. Much higher volume. So, that's great. Once I get my dripless system, there'll be less nuisance water. So, we got the job done. There we go. We have a new bilge pump, a really good one installed. So, I hope this helps somebody that's about to install a bilge pump. Um, me and Steady. Me and Steady got it done. And uh, now it's time to clean stuff up and go home. It's been a long six days since we came to the boat to head out to the, um, to the island. So, that job's done. The boat ain't gonna sink, hopefully. And, uh... If you guys enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. The likes help us on the algorithm so other people can see the video. Subscribe if you like the videos, the how-to videos, or the adventure videos. And I want to get a big thanks to all our patrons. We really appreciate it. We filmed this whole thing on a GoPro. You guys helped us buy. So um, thanks for everything, and uh, fair winds until next time. Drove to the boat tonight after work. Um, just had a sick feeling not knowing that the new bilge pump I installed was actually working or if the fuse had blown again or anything. So I came out and it worked perfect. Super stoked.